Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dan, Warpaint JKU. Obviously that's Warpaint. And this is Maple Leaf, our project Jeep that we are going to be putting leaf springs on on all four corners. Now, this video today is gonna be all about leaf springs because it's old technology. There's a lot of myths behind leaf springs and a lot of the time those leaf springs are not set up correctly, giving you a super rough or bouncy ride. It doesn't have to be that way. In this video, we're gonna talk about the pros, the cons, how to set it up correctly. I'm gonna give you the calculation and even show you how I'm gonna do it on the Jeep. We're also gonna talk about a couple of things that make a leaf spring maybe a little bit more conducive to off-roading and maybe a little bit less of something that you'd wanna drive on the street, but still have a good ride. We're gonna talk all about it in all the details. So check out this video and let's learn all about why you're gonna to wanna to put leaf springs under your rig. And guys, there are a bunch of pros and cons when it comes to leaf springs. We're gonna dive into this in just a second so I can show you guys what exactly happens with leaf spring that's mounted with different shackle angles and lengths. And that's how we're gonna set it up on our JKU to get so much travel and have a good ride height. And it's relatively simple to show you and explain. And you're gonna learn very quickly why on a factory vehicle, when someone modifies it, it no longer rides like it did factory when it's a leaf spring. But let's dive in, talk about some of these pros and cons. We're gonna start off with the pros. And the obvious number one pro is cost. A leaf spring is about as expensive as a coil spring. Now, you still need a shock, so you're not saving any money there, but what you don't need is control arms and all the mounts and brackets for those custom control arms, and you don't need track bars, okay? So without all that stuff, and these days with the cost of steel, you're saving a ton of money. Now, one of the other things is their simplicity and reliability. Those are both awesome pros because Guys, leaf springs, is it's like the oldest spring technology that's out there, and it's still being used today, particularly in the rear of pickup trucks and things like that, because they have a great ability to hold a lot of weight without sagging all of that much, all that much. And the reason for that is because of shackle angles and things like that. But obviously, leaf springs, again, being the oldest technology and still being used today, there's a reason for that, okay? They're reliable and they just plain work. And one of the other pros of a leaf spring is its ability to ride nicely, okay? Um, I know a lot of you guys are gonna scratch your heads and be like, man, I had leaf spring vehicles, they were terrible. Guys, a lot of leaf spring vehicles that you had if they were cars actually probably rode pretty nicely. And if they didn't, they would have with a better shock. And these days we have that shock technology. Now, if you had a pickup truck, I understand why it didn't ride nicely because those are heavy duty springs meant for carrying a load in the bed of that truck or a trailer. And most people don't drive around with that load in the truck or that trailer every day. But if you ever did, you noticed very quickly that that truck pretty much drove like a Cadillac once it had some weight in the bed, all right? And that's the difference. If your spring rate is actually matched to the weight of your vehicle and not a heavy duty spring, Paired with a good shock and set up correctly, like I'm gonna show you in just a second, it'll ride great. But there are some cons, so let's talk about those. Now, most of the cons with a leaf spring are actually gonna be myths. We ended off with our pro being ride. Well, guess what? One of the cons is ride. And the reason isn't, like I just said a second ago, because it, it's, it's an uncomfortable technology. It can be comfortable if it's set up correctly. Again, we'll talk about that and I'll give you a calculation at the end of the video to figure out your custom setup to dial it in and make it ride really well. But a lot of the technology with leaf springs and people thinking that they're uncomfortable is because they either had a vehicle that was fairly comfortable and then they modified it to give it some lift, fit bigger tires, whatever the situation, and then it became uncomfortable. And there's a reason for that, which we'll get into and we'll talk about it on our springboard over there. But again, 
the whole pickup truck thing, right? I don't need to talk about it again, but it's a myth. It, it's if you loaded that pickup truck and that spring was rated for the weight of that truck, they actually drive pretty nice. Now, one of the other cons compared to something like a coil spring, a coil over, or an ORI is the space that it takes to mount it. Obviously, a coil over is like a spring and a shock in one, same with an ORI. So they're they're very easily placed on a frame, on an axle, and you don't have to worry about having space. Our leaf springs are 57 inches long, which means we need 57 inches of space from front to back with the axle somewhere in the middle or close to the middle in order for it to work. Now, most vehicles have that kind of space on there. Uh, the Jeep, uh, the JK, because it was never meant to have leaf springs, uh, it's, it's a little bit trickier, but it's certainly doable. We're gonna set it up and I'm gonna show you how. And the last con is the twist, okay? Leaf springs do not like to twist, right? A coil spring kind of bends in any direction. It's like a slinky, right? Um, it, it'll, it'll go in any direction. So when you're flexing out your suspension and you droop one side and you push another tire up into the wheel well, your, ax your axle's at an angle. So your, your spring perches aren't any more level with, with the, the upper spring mount. Well, when we do that with a leaf spring, it wants to twist the spring. And because they're flat steel, they don't like to twist. They will twist, but they'll fight you a little bit. So that's where a longer spring and one that's actually weighted for the, rated for the weight of the vehicle will actually twist easier than a shorter spring or one that's more heavy duty. So it shouldn't be an issue for us, but that is one of the cons of a leaf spring. Now, for those of you that don't know a ton about leaf springs, I'm gonna explain this in the easiest way possible to help you guys understand it. And basically, a leaf spring has three or four major parts. We obviously have the spring. Now, I made this spring out of just, you know, flat steel. I took a couple of pieces because that's what a, what a leaf spring is, right? It's just several of thin or varying thickness uh, pieces of steel. And that's what gives it its, weight, its rate and its ability to hold uh, weight. Obviously, this doesn't hold much, but it allows me to maneuver it by hand and show you guys how it works. A leaf spring also has a fixed end, which we're gonna talk about in just a minute. And then it has an end that has some movement on it. And this piece here would be called your shackle. Now, the shackle allows our spring to get shorter and longer, right? Obviously, our spring has a, a little bit of an arch in it. But if we were to flatten it out and measure it, this spring is 32 and a half inches long. And if we droop our suspension and our spring has more of an arch, between our eyes is now a shorter distance. So we need one end to move and that shackle allows this end to move and either allows our spring to get shorter or longer. And that will help us take care of it while maintaining the right ride. But it's all in the setup. And whether you're using it for a street vehicle or an off-road vehicle, that is what affects your ride quality, your travel, and your effective spring rate. Let's dive into that. Now guys, your effective spring rate is different from your spring rate. Your spring rate is, again, comprised of the thickness of the seal that your spring is made out of, and the arch, and, and a couple of other things, just the characteristics of the steel that's used to rate how much weight that spring can handle but how soft and how easily that same spring will move can change depending upon your shackle angle. And this is what screws up factory vehicles that people take and put lifts in them. Let me explain. So as we take our spring here and we shorten it for like, you know, putting the weight of a vehicle on it, ride height, right? If we shorten it, it has less of an arch to it. Um, and that spring wants to get longer as we talked about before which means this wants to go up and backwards, right? It doesn't want to go down, it doesn't want to droop, and it doesn't want to get shorter when I push on it. Watch. It wants to go up and backwards. Now, if this is at an angle, it allows it to just go backwards very, very, very easily, okay? But if we move this shackle to, to more of a 90-degree angle at ride height, this spring now is a lot stiffer because it doesn't want to go backwards as easily because of the angle 
and it wants to go up, but it really can't go up because it's at a 90 degree angle. So this spring gets a lot stiffer. And that's the thing. This spring isn't any different than it was a minute ago, okay? And that's something you can't feel in this video, but your shackle angle, just by moving it a couple of inches and adjusting that, guys, this spring is a lot firmer of a spring. That's what happens when people have a factory vehicle that they put a bigger arched spring in to give it a little bit more ride height. They never adjust where the spring mounts on the frame of the vehicle. They only lengthen the shackle, right? And then get a different arch. But remember, we talked about it a minute ago. If you have a more arched spring, that spring is usually a little bit shorter, which means our shackle angle gets more to 90 degrees. And the closer you get to that 90 degree mark, the stiffer that spring's gonna feel, even if the spring's actually not any more heavy duty and it's not any stiffer, it's gonna feel like it is. So talked about spring angles here and I just wanna clear something up so everybody understands it. When we're talking about shackle angle, we're obviously talking about the angle between the shackle and not the spring, but a straight edge between the two eyes of the spring. So for example, if this spring was flat, that would be our shackle angle. Now, the spring isn't gonna be flat at ride height. The spring will still have a little bit of an arch to it. It'll, have, it'll be pretty flat because our axle's actually gonna be under the spring. They call that spring over suspension. They also make them with a little bit more of an arch where you would put the axle on top of the spring. So let's dive on over to our springboard. Let's talk about our shackle length and the shackle angle and how it's gonna translate into us having a nice ride as well as having the right flex. Now I set our shackle up just out of a couple of pieces of steel, nothing crazy. And I set it up at a four inch length and a six inch length. We're gonna start at the four inch length. Now, for our purpose on this Jeep JK, we're actually going to be using a probably pretty close to a six inch shackle. And at ride height, right, let's put a little pressure on the spring, still an arch, but less of one. At ride height, this is, you know, 45, 55 degrees. And that's a pretty steep shackle angle. But what that allows us to have is a nice effective spring rate as well as suspension travel, okay? If we look at this, right, at ride height, I put a mark there on the board. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but if we compress it, you know, till the spring is flat, the spring usually doesn't negative arch, but if we if we compress it, we're basically up here, so we had, we had a couple inches of, you know, a few inches of compression, and if we droop it, right, it droops pretty far, and it usually won't droop much past 90 degrees. Um, the weight of the axle on there is what will help us with the droop because it'll pull the spring down. But again, once it gets to that 90 degree mark and it starts getting shorter than 90, there's a lot of pressure pulling that down. So we usually won't have that. Um, now, if we take that, that shackle and we make it just a little bit longer, right, to six inches and we set it at ride height, right? Same, ri same ride height, same ride height we had before. Um, we get a little bit more up travel out of it and we get a lot more droop out of it, okay? Um, and again, our shackle angle now is at about 40, 45 degrees at ride height, which is a lot nicer for driving something off road. Now here's the one warning with a 45 degree shackle angle. If you put your shackle angle at about 45 degrees on your vehicle, that's where your spring gets kind of flat. And when it's flat, it'll get pretty bouncy, okay? So that's where like maybe a tunable shock where you can adjust the dampening on the shock will actually give you a good ride quality. But on road, that a lot of the time, while it works great off-road and gives us a lot of compression and a lot of droop, on road, that bounciness can definitely make that vehicle feel a little bit unstable. So typically on road, you'd want your shackle to be a little bit closer to that 30 degree mark at ride height. And that will stiffen up the spring just a little bit, right? With that effective spring rating, 
take a little bit of the bounce out of that spring. And again, with a good shock with the technology we have today, it'll ride great and it'll be very stable on road. Now, what winds up happening with a vehicle uh, that has a nice spring, let's move over here and basically simulate our spring having a 90 degree shackle angle at ride height, which is what commonly happens um, on factory vehicles that wind up having a, a bigger arch spring or a lift kit. Um, when you have that 90 degree shackle angle, this spring does not have basically any up travel, right? There's really not a whole lot there. And when it comes to droop, we don't have a lot of droop either because the spring is already at 90 and it'll go past 90 a little bit, but it, it doesn't like to. So you just don't have a lot, of, a lot of movement in that spring. There's a lot less action compared to when we were at that 45 degree mark earlier. Now, the one thing you can't feel, again, I mentioned it earlier, is the effective spring rate. When we're at that 90 degree angle here at ride height, this spring is stiff compared to how it was when it was more at that 30, 45 degree angle earlier. So for our purposes, because Maple Leaf in the background over here is going to primarily be an off-road vehicle, we are gonna set our shackle angle a little bit closer to 45 degrees. Not 45 degrees exactly, but we want it past 30, okay? Um, and the reason we want that is because we want this vehicle to be built still to be nice on the road, okay? But we also want this vehicle to have a ton of travel. And by setting it like that with our spring length, I know that I'm gonna be able to get 14 inches of travel out of this rig, which is as much as a coilover. Now, usually on Jeep JKs, if you take a walk with me for a second, when we put a uh, 14 inch travel coilover on it, they usually do that in the back. In the front, they do a 12 inch coilover. It's a little shorter. And the reason for that is because you have your ABS and all sorts of electronics up here on both sides of the engine compartment, right? The other side, you have your battery and your tip -em and your fuse box and all that stuff. And over here, you have your ABS and your computer and all that stuff. So if you have to go up under the fender in order to fit that 14 inch travel coilover and still have enough up travel to make it comfortable, you wind up having some issues. So they usually put a 12 inch coil over in the front and a 14 in the rear. Well, we're gonna have 14 inches of travel in the front and the rear with no track bars, with no control arms, with no axle trusses, with none of the custom bracketry that we need for all those control arms, none of the heim joints, none of the maintenance that goes with all that stuff. And it's gonna ride really nicely because of our shackle angle. Now, when it comes to the suspension setup and how we're going to translate that into a JKU that was never never meant to have leaf springs. I know what a lot of you are thinking, yeah, the J8, the J8. Listen, the J8 Wrangler uh, was a military version of the Jeep that did have a rear leaf spring. So setting it up in the rear is actually not going to be all that different. That J8 was never sold in the United States. So I've actually never seen one. But I want you to think about a YJ. Okay, a YJ is the newest Jeep Wrangler that actually came with leaf springs. And if you looked at a YJ, Google image, search it, however you wanna look, the leaf spring in the front actually would look like this. It would have a shackle hanging down below the front bumper. Your front bumper would be up here, then the shackle, and then your spring, your front axle, and so on. And that's where your approach angle, right? If we had an obstacle in front of us that our front bumper just went right over the top of, it would run into this shackle. Now we're gonna fix that on the JKU by actually moving the shackle to the rear of the front spring. So our, our Jeep is essentially going to look like this on the front. We're gonna have our front bumper up here, our obstacle would come in, and yeah, our, our eye is gonna hang down a little bit lower but it's gonna allow us to have a much better approach angle on that obstacle. Now there's a downside to that, okay? If you're street driving your rig, and this is the reason why on a front spring, they don't actually ever put the shackle on the rear of the front spring is because if you had to stab your brake really hard and slow down very quickly, 
traffic, a kid, a ball rolls out in the street, whatever, you're going to get a little bit more nosedive in the front of the vehicle when you do that. But because this rig is driven primarily off road and when it's on road, let's face it, this isn't the kind of thing with tons and forties that you're going to be driving your family across the country to Florida in. So I don't think we really have to worry too much about that. Now, here's the other downside to putting that on the rear. If we look at our spring here and you look at this bolt, right? We're going to assume this is the center of the spring. This is where our axle is. There's actually a mark directly behind it. Hopefully you guys can see it there. Well, this bolt is directly lined up with that mark. Now, if we compress our suspension, that bolt actually moves farther toward the shackle. Okay, because of the way the shackle moves, the center of the spring actually, as it compresses, it moves further back in a little bit of an arc. Now, the downside to that is if this was the front of our spring and we compress our suspension, our suspension is actually moving away from the obstacle as we're trying to climb it. That's the opposite of what your vehicle does with a control arm. Your control arms also move in an arc, but it actually moves that arc and it moves your axle toward the obstacle as you're trying to control, you're, you're trying to climb it. But again, with 40 inch tires and a heavy Dana 60 up there with lockers, grip is not gonna be our problem. It will be fine. Now, on the rear of the vehicle, we're basically gonna set it up as far as shackle location and fixed end location, just like they do on every other leaf spring vehicle where the shackle is gonna be under the rear bumper. The reason they do that is directly related to this arc. If we step over and we take a look at Maple Leaf, the rig that's getting this suspension set up, it's lifted and we can tell because it still has short arms, this tire is actually a lot closer to the fender in the front than it is in the rear. And the reason for that is because as this tire compresses, it actually moves backwards just a little bit because of that, like we said, that arc. Now, that's where long arms are a benefit, right? There's a lot less of an arc, so your suspension moves straight up and down. You climb over obstacles a lot easier. But it's going to allow us to have a great approach angle and still a good departure angle. And the reason for that is because even though our shackle will hang down in the rear, we're gonna be moving this rear axle further back. the back corner of the tire to where it hits that bumper. There'll be less of an angle there, thus a better approach or departure angle. And in the front, we're doing the same thing. We're actually gonna move the front axle forward about three inches, which is going to allow us to not only have less of an angle in the front, but it's gonna be so much less of an angle that when we have this in the front and that on the rear of that front spring, it's gonna address all of those issues. Okay, so now it's time to talk about the math. How do we figure out where on the frame from our fixed point how far back do we put our frame mounting location for the top of our shackle so that when we're at ride height and all those kinds of things, we end up with the desired shackle angle? Well, it's actually pretty simple, but it is going to bring you back to like honors math class in high school. But have no fear because we have Google these days and awesome calculators, so it's not that big of a deal. The first thing you're going to want to do is determine what your desired shackle angle is. Now, that can vary, right? I said before, 45 degrees is great for a spring over axle that doesn't have a whole lot of arch to it at ride height. <clears throat> It'll give you a lot of travel and flex, but it'll make it maybe a little bit more bouncy and a little less stable on road. So you kind of want to figure out where you want to be. Now, typically on road for a spring over axle, those vehicles will be set up at about 30 degrees at ride height and then 45 degrees or closer to 45 degrees when they're compressed. So, you want to figure out your desired shackle angle at ride height. For this demonstration, I basically said I want 45 degrees at ride height. Okay, I figured out the sign of that. Now, after you figure out the sign, and again, it's very easy. You just enter 45 and then hit the sign button on your calculator, S-I-N, right? It's pretty simple. It'll tell you what it is, or you can just enter it into Google and ask what the sign of, you know, 45 degrees is. Um... Then you're gonna to wanna to take that answer and multiply it by the shackle length, okay? In our, in our case, my shackle length was six inches, all right? Now you wanna take that answer and subtract it 
from the overall spring length from eye to eye. Now, here's where it can get tricky with an actual leaf spring. Basically, what I did here was I flattened my spring, because remember, as we flatten it, it gets longer. I flattened my spring, I measured eye to eye, and it told me what it was, 32 and a half inches. With a actual leaf spring going under your vehicle, you're not gonna be able to push on it and flatten it, right? It's meant to hold thousands of pounds. So what you would do is actually just take a string, put it on one eye, have the string follow the arch as you get to the other eye, then straighten that string and measure it. And that will tell you how long that spring is. And guys, that's basically just an elementary introduction into these springs. You've now learned why springs, um, you know, even with their effective spring rating not, or with their spring rating not changing, why the effective spring rate does. You've learned what different shackle angles will do to your droop and your compression. Um, and you've kind of learned what we're gonna do on our JKU in order to get 14 inches of travel in this rig. Now stay tuned because the axles are almost done on this rig and when they are, I'm gonna be throwing them inside of this Jeep and we're gonna be setting it up on some leaf springs and then testing it out against war paint, which is on a coil spring with about 12 inches of travel, same, you know, 40 inch tire, on the same axles and uh, we're gonna put it through some stuff and we're gonna compare the different suspensions and you'll see just how good a leaf spring can work when it's set up correctly. So guys, hit that like and subscribe button, leave a comment. If you have any questions, get on over to the Instagram page at WarPaintJKU, uh, shoot me a message over there. I respond to everybody and uh, that's it. Get out and build something.